Hey, what's up, guys? We're going to look at Kirchhoff's first law. Whenever we analyze circuits, there are two really important laws, Kirchhoff's first law and his second law. And by applying these very simple rules, we can solve any circuit problem. So what is Kirchhoff's first law? And it's very simple. The sum of currents entering into a junction is equal to the sum of currents leaving a junction. Mathematically, we write that like this. Now, this is the Greek symbol sigma, which means the sum of currents in is equal to the sum of currents out. And this is conservation of charge. In physics, there's a number of quantities that have to be conserved. If we think of energy and we think of momentum, charge is another one. We can't destroy electrons and therefore we can't destroy the charge on them. So we've always got to conserve the total amount of charge in any situation. If we have a look at this example here. So we've got a, um, a junction here and we need to look at the sum of currents in and we need to look at the sum of currents out. And we're going to look at it algebraically. So going in, we've got I1 and I2. So I1 plus I2. And then we've got a number of currents leaving I3, I4, and I5, which is I3 plus I4 plus I5. So the sum of currents into the junction is equal to the sum of currents out of a junction. It is that simple. We're now going to look at it with some other examples, and you'll see how simple this rule is, but you've got to apply it really consistently and very carefully. So number one, here's our junction, and we've got a number of branches in and a number of branches out. We can say that the sum of the currents in is equal to the sum of the currents out. So going in, we've got one amp, two amps, and three amps. So if we add those together, that gives us six amps. Going out, we've got two amps and I1. So it's I1 plus two amps. So you can easily see I1 is simply four amps. We've conserved the total charge coming in, the total current coming in, and the total charge and current leaving that junction. Example two, here's our junction. The sum of currents in has got to equal the sum of currents out. So we say that going in, we've got I1. I1 is equal to 2.5 amps, which is going out here, and three amps here, plus three amps. And that gives us a total of 5.5 amps. We've conserved the current and the charge. Well, really, we should say we've conserved the charge because that's the quantity that is being conserved. This is a more complex example. Again, we're just going to say the sum of the currents in is equal to the sum of the currents out. So looking at junction A, I1 plus I2 are going in is equal to I3. But if we look at junction B, we can say that I3 itself is equal to I4 plus I5 plus I6 because we had I3 going in and these three were leaving that junction as well. The next example, number four, we've got 0 0.8 amps coming in and 0 0.5 amps leaving and we've got I1. So we just use our rule again. Sum of currents in is equal to the sum of currents out. So we say 0 0.8 is equal to 0 0.5 plus I1. So I1 is simply 0 0.3. If we look at this junction here, we've got the sum of the currents in is equal to the sum of the currents out. And we've got 0 0.5 from earlier, but we've also calculated that I1 is equal to 0 0.3. So 0 0.5 plus 0 0.3 amps is equal to I2. So I2 is very simply 0 0.8 amps, which should come as no surprise because what we had coming in has got to equal what is going out on the right hand side. If we look here, we've got a couple of different junctions. We'll call them A and B. So let's look at A first of all. Sum of currents in has got to equal the sum of currents out. So going in, we've got three amps and four amps. So three plus four equals I1. So I1 is seven amps. Now we look at B. We look at what's going in. Well, the sum of the currents in is equal to the sum of the currents out. So we can say I1 and two amps are going in. So I1 was seven. So we've got seven amps plus two amps is equal to I2. And I2 therefore is nine amps. So loads of different examples, but we're just applying that very basic rule that the sum of currents in is equal to the sum of currents out. And in that, we are conserving charge. Last three examples, looking at some real circuits here. 
Number one, we've got a parallel circuit with three identical bulbs and each of these bulbs get three amps. So if we add all of those together, we get I1, which is nine amps here. But because three amps are branched off here, we get six amps coming down for I2. Three further amps branch off to the right, so we get left with I3 is equal to three amps. We get for I4, we need to add up these three amps here, plus these three amps here, and that gives us six amps. And then we add in one more three amps, and we get back to our nine amps. So you can see we've applied Kirchhoff's first law there just by looking at the diagram, it's very simple. In question two, another circuit, we've got five amps this time. And this time we've got a parallel circuit, but we've got two bulbs in series in the middle branch. They've got more resistance, so they only get one amp. And we've got another value here for I2, which is three amps here. So I3, if we think about what currents are going into this junction, some of the currents in, is equal to the sum of currents out. At this junction A, we've got one amp plus I3 is equal to three amps. Therefore, very easily, I3 is simply two amps. If we look at this junction here, junction B, we know that coming up to the top, we must have five amps because we started with five amps over here. So sum of currents in is equal to the sum of currents out. So you can see that uh, we have I4, which is going in, plus I2, which is three amps, is equal to five amps. So I4 must also equal two amps. Very, very simple. The last example, we just got a circuit here and we've got 0 0.03 amps I1. Here is our junction. It's really important to identify where that is. So we can say that the sum of currents in is equal to the sum of currents out. So going into this junction, we have 0 0.03 is equal to 0 0.02 plus I3. So very easily, I3 is 0 0.01 amps. So you've seen we've applied Kirchhoff's first law to some real circuits, and it's very, very easy. So in summary, Kirchhoff's first law, the sum of currents into a junction is equal to the sum of currents leaving a junction. And this represents the conservation of charge because we can't destroy electrons and we can't destroy the charge on them. So the way to solve any problem, identify the junction, calculate the sum of the currents in and make that equal to the sum of the currents out. And that's it. Thanks for listening. See you all soon.